Hello everyone, thank you for watching. I would like to first thank everyone who has shown their support, sharing and liking the videos. I have also seen the comments and questions. We will address those questions to the right interviewee. So please continue sending us questions so we know what you want to know. My name is Eric Vasquez and you're watching eConnect. We're on the fourth day of the global training of the Climate Reality Leadership Training Corps. We've heard the founder and chairman, Mr. Al Gore, talking about the devastating impacts of climate change on human health. For example, we have that heat extends the life of insects that eat our crops. We've also heard that heat increases the chances of getting diseases, for example, like diabetes or hypertension. Heat also increases the toxins in the food that we eat, affecting our health. So now people are jumping into regenerative agriculture and organic products to not get their health affected by the impacts of climate change. We also had the pleasure of hearing the thoughts of Jamil Smith, who is a senior writer at Rolling Stone. He talked about the movement of Black Lives Matter. He mentioned that it's a big movement because it demands a very simple thing, that the life of everyone, no matter color, gender, or situation, matters. People talk about racism, but what is it exactly? If we look into a common dictionary, we will see that biologists define it as making differences physically and behaviorally. So they never talk about a suspicious or racist in human race. The human race is one race and the gene is the same for everyone. So race is actually just an idea that people have created to divide people into different groups. So there is no such a thing as racism. We have to think about discrimination. And until human race doesn't really accept that uh, discrimination exists and it affects you and I in different ways, we will never get out of this boat alive. We are together in this and we have to respect each other. We need to have equity, we need to have inclusion, we need to have justice, and we need to be diverse. So when talking about justice, someone came to my mind, someone who has been actually working on that area. Today, we have the presence of a climate reality leader co-founder of Pusion Kinayahan, a grassroots organization committed to bringing climate justice, and my wife, Mara Cantonao. Hello, Mara. Thank you for accepting this interview with the ECOS. Hi, Eric. Thank you for inviting me to your show. And I would like to say hello also to everybody who's watching here at eConnect. Could you please tell us about how you started as an activist fighting against climate change? So in 2016, I was trained in the Climate Reality Leadership Training Corps in Manila. And then about two months later, we read on the news that there was going to be a 300 megawatt coal-fired power plant that was going to be built in the heart of Cebu City or in Barangay Sawan Calero. So this barangay is actually um, densely populated, mostly low-income families. So they're already very vulnerable to begin with. And they are also near the fish port. Um, so with, together with the Cebuano leaders, um, Cebuano climate leaders that I've met in the Manila training, um, we got together with other organizations, people's organizations, community um, organizations, um, NGOs from Cebu and from the other parts of the Philippines. Um, we started the anti-coal movement and we were successful in that campaign and we were able to stop the coal plant from being built. So our the Pusyon Kinayahan advocacy started there. And um, until now, we are providing help and support for all the frontline and fenceline communities here in Cebu that are affected severely by the climate crisis. What would be one of the challenges that the Philippines is facing regarding climate change? 
uh, fighting against uh, coal plant, uh, also fighting against reclamation uh, projects and defending environmental activists when they are illegally detained. So what do you think is the impact of climate change and justice in the Philippines? The attainment of social justice is profoundly affected by climate change. As you know, the Philippines is one of the countries that is most vulnerable to the effects of climate change. And um, since we are still a developing nation, a lot of the people are still poor and the infrastructure is still poor. When, um, since we are already in a vulnerable um, state, we are affected first and worse in the climate crisis. And there is a huge disconnect between government addressing the needs of the people and the environment in mitigating the effects. So I would say um, attaining justice is, is, is very hard. This is why so many environmental, um, or almost all, if not all of the environmental groups here and people's organizations are demanding for climate justice from the side of the government and especially um, from corporations that are mainly the cause of the climate crisis. Do you think the government or organizations or civil groups are doing enough to bring justice to an equity level? It is never enough. Um, never enough on the side of the government, never enough on the side of the people fighting and demanding for it, and, and never enough on the public's action um, or climate action. Um, as I said, as I mentioned, um, there is a disconnect um, between government and people's concern in the, in the effects of climate change. Um, but this concern does not necessarily reflect or convert into climate action. Um, since I don't want to, to give it as an excuse, but um, this is just a fact that the Philippines is a poor country. Um, we are still a developing country. And since um, climate change is um, a concept that is and not really yet a household term. There are other more um, pressing concerns that the public are most likely to resonate with, such as um, poverty, a lack of jobs, um, a lack of proper health care. So they would prioritize uh, these issues over climate issues. So yeah, it's, it's not enough, and this is why we are here to help uh, bridge this, this huge gap in, in the disconnect between what we need to act to, to mitigate uh, the climate crisis and the effects of it on our environment and on our people. What advice would you give people who are being trained right now at the uh, Climate Reality Leadership Training Corps or people around the world who are starting to wake up and realize that we are living in a climate emergency and want to take action. My message to the future climate reality leaders being trained right now is to keep advocating. Climate advocacy is a never ending job. It's 24 seven. Advocate not only to the public, but also to your friends, families, and coworkers. The message needs to reverberate across the world a thousand more times. Mara, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you for your time. The information that you share at some times is sad, but it's very empowering to know that there is people who actually care and are going out there fighting for climate justice. Thank you for inviting me, Eric, and more power to the ECOS. Justice is a word that people commonly use, but people don't really understand the meaning or they don't apply the meaning to their daily lives. Once again, climate change is affecting everyone, no matter your background, no matter color, gender, everyone. But those in poverty, fence line, front line, 
they are the first ones to suffer the consequences. And I have a question for you. Are we a society that is really looking forward to move into a more sustainable world? Or are we just saying it to make us happy? My name is Eric Vasquez. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and continue giving your comments and questions. We will try to answer them. We appreciate your shares and likes. You were watching eConnect.